Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Shannon Bellum. Thank you so much for taking a little time and spending your afternoon and your knitting time, your making time with me this weekend. Um, I am Bellum Make on Ravelry and on Instagram. I'll pop those on screen right here. So if you want to find them, they're also in the description box. Um, if you so, don't worry about having to <laughs> grab the information right now. Um, I've been up to a lot of stuff since I last talked to you a couple weeks ago. If you haven't watched my my channel in a couple weeks or in a in a couple episodes, this setup will be a little different for you. I um, I changed around the way I um, podcast, so you're getting a different view. You're getting just it's the other side of my craft room. Um, yeah, and I have I have Martha on the other side today. I'm trying that out. See how we like her here. I think it's good. It's it's something different. Give you a fresh perspective. I did it because actually I use this this like step ladder thing for um, usually to put. I don't have a long tripod. I have a little tripod, so I don't use that. I use this step ladder thing to put my camera on so that you get eye level <laughs> view with me and. Um, I've moved it over to the window so that my cat has a perch to watch the birds because it's spring here in northern New Jersey where I live and I work. And uh, yeah, he's enjoying it. He's on it right now, sitting on it right now. He also, what's kind of nice, what I noticed last time, he can make more appearances on camera because there's more, you see more floor space than you did with my old setup. So, having a little little water in my black whale yeah black whale uh glass it's old it's a, a from beach haven new jersey so it's uh, along the i think it's lbi long beach island uh, beach town that i went to many years ago i've been there went there a few times um picked up the i love skulls and crossbones um that won't be any surprise to anyone who has been watching me for a while but yeah, well, you wouldn't know that, but this is a knitting podcast. <laughs> uh, my channel is called Whiskey and Wool. Today, I'm going to mostly talk about wool. I don't, yeah, I don't really have any whiskey chatter today. Yeah, have more maybe next time. But today is going to be all about wool. Um, I have two finished objects. I am wearing a finished object and uh, so is Martha. So let me talk to you about mine first. This is the Elton cardigan. I don't have the picture. I'll pop a picture on screen. Um, it, I, it's the, the Elton cardigan by Hoi Locatelli is um, stripes of wool and then mohair. So a few rows of wool and then a few rows of mohair on the whole entire sweater. I did make a version like that using this beautiful Verbit blue, gradient blue wool and gradient blue mohair. It was fantastic yarn and I stalk her Instagram daily <laughs> to, um, just seeing what if there's anything I can't resist. I have so much yarn though. I have a lot of yarn. Um, I have enough sweater quantities I think to get my knitting all the way through the end of the year I think that's if I stick with knitting that and not buying new um the yarn most of the yarn I have though I realize this I'll, I'll talk to you more about this later when I tell you about some of my new cast-ons um I have a lot of single skeins of indie dyed um, wool yarn fingering weight and I collected it over the be the better part of probably 2016 to 17 thinking I you know it's indie dyed so I could always get more because um, it doesn't matter indie dyed batches even dyed at the same time don't match so I always thought, well, if I start knitting with one or I swatch one and I love it, I can get more. Um, but it's really not that easy. It, it, I guess if you stick with bigger indie dyers like Hedgehog or Hedgehog Fibers or, um, whew, 
I want to say Madeline Tosh. I don't have any Madeline Tosh, but she's got so much. There's so much controversy going on right now about her social um, views that I would I cannot recommend her her wool. I, I've never used it anyway. Like I just never bought it. I sort of shy away from the bigger um, companies anyway. I really like smaller operations just because I don't know. I like the personal touch that happens with the smaller brand. And uh, and then also there's a couple, I probably have, I could think of maybe four or five indie dyers off the top of my head whose yarn, give me everything you dye, that type, I feel that way about them, just like give me anything and everything that you dye. Um, so yeah, and then there's other indie dyers who are small operations that I really um try to patronize their patronize no what's the word patron no i try to give them business i don't know what i was trying to think of if i remember it i'll put i'll put it on screen here um anyway i try to give them business because i i want to see i like little companies i've always liked little companies i don't know why I, you know, there's some, there's probably, I, I do know why, I guess, but I don't, it's a long story. I, I just feel like it's, it's worthwhile. You're, you're actually helping someone, um, directly in a more direct way than a bigger, with a bigger firm. Um, anyway, you all decide how to spend, <laughs> where to put your dollars and who you want to help or whatever but I've been really into sheepy sheepy wools anyway um, and less into indie dyed yarn however I was talking about this sweater <laughs> I'll put a picture on screen of me wearing it um, it uh, this one is knit out of this is um, an indie dyer that uh, lives near me but I this is the first yarn I've ever purchased of hers um, this is a this it on skein. This is how much I have left. This was I bought three skeins of fingering weight. It's cat sandwich fibers. I'm not doing so well here. Cat sandwich fibers. This is her uh, glitzy base, which means it has a tiny bit of shimmer. The shimmer is super subtle. I don't even know if you can see it. Yeah, you can catch little glints of it there. Um, this colorway is called Garden Tea Party. I picked it because I think you can see it here. It has like little pale um, bits of turquoise in it. And um, and then there's this golden peachy color. You see that? You can really see it there. And then on top of it, it's speckled with, with um, pink and black and purple and dark blue. It's just so pretty and green. Um, Anyway, it is a 438 yard put up, 100 grams. And so I use 2.4 skeins. Um, if should you wish to follow in my footsteps and use this pattern to make a really basic um, jewel neckline, it's got like a rounded neckline um, cardigan. So what I realized a little while ago, a few months ago, was that in spring and summer, this is the type of sweater that I'll reach for over and over. And these colors are, they just scream sh um, spring to me. I just really, really love it. Look at that. Look at how pretty. It's so pretty. Um, and it's something that I would just roll up and maybe put in my purse or put in my, in my um, tote bag that I take to work every day and just to put on in case it's too chilly like so often in the summer in this area maybe near you too um, there's AC everywhere so you go into a shopping plaza and there's AC you go into a theater there's AC there's you know you go into the grocery store there's AC so um, if you're coming from outside and you're in a tank top or a short sleeve a lightweight blouse you want another layer and this is exactly the kind of sweater that I love to pull so I imagine that I'm going to be wearing this a lot I haven't worn it yet it, I just finished it um this past weekend I was actually really sick again I had strep throat and it and it um really knocked me for a loop it made me so tired and um I think whenever you're coughing and you feel like it's hard to breathe that you just are 
feel tired. So anyway, I got a lot of knitting done, which is why I have this done and I got this done as well. Um, so what else can I tell you about this? I do wish I made it a little longer. I followed the pattern. Oh, I also uh, knit a smaller size than what she recommends in the patterns. I think she recommends 10 inches of, of positive ease. And for me, that probably would have been the fourth size. Instead, I made the second size, but you can see I still have quite a lot of positive ease. That's just on one side. I've got like four inches over there and I, you know, I probably have like eight inches of positive ease, but it's just the way that the sweater drapes. I'm also really busty. Like I'm a very big busted girl who thinks she's a small busted girl. <laughs> My whole life. I never realize how big I am until I see pictures and then I'm just like, okay, yeah, huge. I just, I have a very small rib cage. Um, so that's what makes me feel like I'm a small busted person. Um, so anyway, my, my sweater, I love this sweater. I love the style of it. Um, one thing I did, which you may notice in my finished objects pictures on Ravelry, I put seven buttons on this and when I was placing the buttons I did it by I counted the rows so um, when I was doing the buttonholes I was counting the rows all the way up knowing I start you start at the bottom on this one you start at the bottom edge and knit up um, with the buttonholes so you could do it the other way too you could knit from the top down if you wanted I knew I was gonna put a button on the on the neckband right here um, and I think you can see here that the distance between this button, this button right here, sorry, I keep looking off to the side because that's where my screen is so I can see what you're, what you're going to see. Um, so this top button right here is the distance between these two is quite small compared to the distance between all the rest of the buttons. And this is a, this is a thing that happens in the garment industry too. You'll see it a lot on men's wear shirts. So you'll see that the distance between the first two buttons is short compared to the rest. Um, and that, I mean, I don't know why they do it in the men's shirts particularly, but it's this is a common thing to do. Um, so I, and I don't mind the two close buttons near the neck because those are the two that I'm least likely to button. Or if I'm really cold, I may button this one, but I'll probably leave the neck unbuttoned. But at any rate, I thought it was more important to um, evenly space the seven buttons going up and then this last one could be closer together. So th I'm sharing that with you just because it's a quick and easy tip, um, a thing that you could incorporate into your own making if you want. It, just, it does really make placing buttons easier because you can then determine what's the proper distance that I want and it's usually it should be three inches so I've got about three inches between um, the rest of these three three and a half between the rest of these but then I didn't have to take the measurement and divide by um, you also divide by by the buttons plus one so if you have seven buttons you would divide by eight if you have five buttons you would divide by six so you can also do it that way if you want but I thought it was more important to make sure that the buttons were um, evenly spaced in the body and properly spaced in the body and then letting this one be a little closer because this is also something that you see in um, in tailor-made shirts so yeah I love this sweater and I um, felt like I should make more and um, that was when I looked at my indie dyed yarn stash and realized that um, I have very little that I have enough of one color to make a sweater out of. Like, I don't have sweaters quantities. Um, I have a few, a handful of two skeins, but I mostly have single skeins. And I think, yeah, I think I have a one three skein, but I it's single ply and I don't, I'm trying not to knit garments with single ply because it pills, it, it's dealt more delicate yarn and it peel, pills more easily. So um, I've actually de-stashed most of my single ply. I do have a little bit left. It's on my de-stash page. If you like single plies, and single plies are awesome for shawls. So if you're knitting shawls um, and you want some single ply, Indie Dyed, I have it and it's I'm selling it for less than you can get it from the maker. So take a look. 
Um, I would also encourage you, if you are interested, to look at what I don't have for sale and ask me because I do need to do a clean out. I really feel like it's time to do a clean out um, of a lot of the single skeins if I'm not going to knit with them. And a lot of them have been hanging around for quite a while. Some are dear to me, so some will be an absolute no. But others, I, yeah, I could be persuaded to part with them. <laughs> let me know if you're interested. Okay, let me talk about what Martha's wearing. So come over here, Martha. Come a little closer. Come into the light, Martha. Um, so Martha is wearing my West Wool knit. Um, it West Wool is a yarn. Do I have the things? I do. Um, West Wool is a yarn by Stephen West. Um, designed by Stephen West and Malia of um, Stephen and Penelope. I have the, sorry that you're not getting it in focus. There you go. You're getting, there you go, Tandem. I made it out of the, Tandem is the DK base. I think the other one is called Bicycle, um, the fingering weight. And uh, it's really, this is really, really gorgeous yarn. It's beautiful. It it was a, um, a lot of fun to knit with. This was a very fast knit, by the way. Um, this is, the pattern is New York Laneway. It's my own pattern. And that's the pattern. Uh, I originally made the pattern out of um, a cashmere, 100% cashmere DK weight yarn by Clinton Hill Cashmere. Um, and I was curious to see how it would knit up in a, um, in a woolly wool. So the West wool is a uh, breed specific blend of Falkland Merino, 90% Falkland Merino and 10% Texel. Um, Texel is a sheep breed, not a, not, it sounds like tinsel, which is um, a synthetic fiber, um, but it's a, it's a sheep breed. So the, it's really, really beautiful yarn. It, I enjoyed working with it quite a lot and I'm excited about the possibilities of making something else with it. I don't know what though, I'm going to just sort of let that marinate and, and cook on the, on the back burner of my brain and, and, um, help me decide. Um, I used five skeins to knit this. I do think one word of um, advice if you decide you want to make this sweater, the New York Laneway sweater, uh, with a woolly wool, a rust, this isn't rustic, I wouldn't call this rustic, this is pretty, it's pretty nice, um, but it is a, a toothy, it's a wool, you know, it's not like, it doesn't have the drape, it's got more structure. Um, on the skein, then um, it doesn't have the drape that the cashmere does. So if you do want to make that sweater, I would go up a size. Like I do regret not going up a size. I think if I'd gone up a size, um, I would get more of the draping around the hip than I got. I will um, show you, I have a picture of this, of me wearing this. I have worn this to work already. Um, it, and I just, I love the colors. I love this light blue with the orange. Um, the orange is called Beatrix and that's it on the skein. This is how much I have left. I have almost a full skein left of the orange and the blue is called glass. So these two colors together, they just are so pretty. Look at that. So pretty. And then I picked a, he's got several grays. They have several grays. The gray that I chose is um, a cool toned. I think it's right in the middle. I think there's a paler gray and a deeper gray, but then there's also heathered grays um, that, that are available. I picked this cool toned, non-heathered um, gray called uh, Graykovich because I wanted to, um, I wanted to, make these two colors relate when I was choosing my color scheme. Um, if you if you are planning to knit New York Laneway and you um, want to, you know, you're not sure about colors, this so this is a bright version. My original sweater was a neutral version. And you what the what I would recommend is that I actually have notes in the pattern where I talk to you about color and choosing your colors and um, 
you should put the lightest color here in this position the middle color goes here in this position and then your deepest color goes here in this your darkest color here um, this one and this one you only need one skein of each i mean this is how much i have left i think once you get up i i believe i made the third size so if you the pattern is has seven sizes um so if you make i think up through size five with the west wool you could probably you will probably be fine with just five skeins um after that you probably are going to need um for size six you're probably going to need another one of these another one of whatever you use for there and you'll probably just use a dab um, and same with the seven size, but I think you'll be fine with one skein in all the sizes of the gray. And then um, the orange, you would probably need a fourth skein by size six or seven. I don't know, the yardage is all in the pattern. That's just my sort of thought, my ballpark gut feeling <laughs> about how much yarn you might need. Um, I am gonna make another West Wool sweater though, definitely. Someone posted this blue with um the canary yellow that he has and or they have i keep saying he but it's a it was a collaboration as as far as i understand it um, but there was like a canary yellow color of um west wool i don't know the color name i'm probably it's probably not canary yellow <laughs> but it was with this color and it looks so pretty together i could definitely see doing something with that um so i may do i may do something like what I did with the Clinton Hill cashmere when I had extra um, cashmere from my first knit. That's how New York Laneway was born, actually, because I had a significant amount. I had $100 worth of um, cashmere yarn left, and I only had to spend another, oh, maybe like 150 to get enough yarn to make a whole sweater. So, um, yeah, that was it was totally worth it for me. So yeah, those are my two finished objects. I, I was I was quite the busy knitter this time around, um, this last couple weeks. Um, I actually thought that I would have three finished objects for you. Two weeks ago when I podcast, I thought I'm gonna have three of these sweaters done. And I probably would have had one of my works in progress done, my as if tea by Shay Johnson, except that, um, in case you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll show you a picture. This is the As If Tea. So it's um, a Aran Waite wool with uh, mohair, um, no, I don't know. I'm gonna put it on screen, because I don't remember. Um, anyway, that pattern, um, I probably would have finished it, except that Asylum Fibers, Stephanie from Asylum Fibers, started a cal for cropped sweaters. And I think she's going to be knitting a sweater by Caitlin Hunter, and um, she's running the cal with somebody else. And it's just for the month of May, because crop sweaters knit up pretty fast. And she invited other crop patterns, people to use other crop patterns, and she also said, you don't have to use her yarn necessarily to join. Um, so I decided to hold back on um, working on the As If Tea. I asked her if whips were okay and she said yes, but I didn't want to be all the way done um, when the cow starts. I wanted to join in. So I, so I kind of put this on the side and didn't knit on it. I did knit a few rows today only because I was in traffic and... Um, those of you who have watched before know I knit when I sit in traffic. So, and this is a very, I'm in the very mindless part. It is a bottom up sweater knit. Um, and I do, I am planning to, it'll be cropped on me. It's just that the body that she, I think her, that the dimensions that the pattern's written for is only eight inches. So eight inches from the armpit to the, the eight inches from the armpit where this will end to here is going to be like just below my bra line so you can't see because of the New York laneway sweater but my bra line is there so it's pretty low um it's one of the things that happens to us big busted ladies um 
Yeah, so eight inches would probably take me maybe three quarters of an inch below my bra line, and that is just too cropped for me. Um, so I'm going to be knitting it um, probably down to here or so, probably as long as I have this sweater, um, which I think this sweater is from the armpit down, it's about 13 inches. So I'm gonna, I already, I had um, already sized this up on Martha and Martha is my size, so she's convenient for um, things like this. So I already sized the, the, what I've knitted up so far on Martha and realized that I probably need somewhere around 12 inches at least. So I'll, I'll keep checking um, on that. But you'll see more of this probably my next podcast. I, once I decide, once I decide I'm gonna go, knit this this will be knit like it'll just be done um because it's a very fast knit i mean in the just in, i probably knit on it 10 or 15 minutes today and i knit about six rows it was really fast um so the yarn the yarn is this i love this yarn i'm also really trying hard not to use superwash wool when I am knitting a heavier weight yarn. So superwash, I've decided is fine in fingering weight, but if it's heavier than fingering weight, I'm trying to make sure that I'm not using um, superwash because superwash really makes um, wool go a little limper and, and be a little more drapey. And I think in a heavy knit, you know, thicker yarn, that drapey droop just isn't so nice um, all the time. Though it would be it would be great in this. So superwash, DK Wade, <laughs> superwash. It would it would look amazing in this. Um, this is not DK Wade. I, this this is Aaron, uh, worsted weight worsted weight yarn, and it is not superwash. It is from it is indie dyed though. From fiber for the people. Is that it? Yeah, fiber for the people. A Nevada-based dyer who, I don't think she lives too far from Vegas or Reno area. Nevada's a big state. Um, most of it's wilderness. <laughs> um, so you can see there, 100% non-superwash merino. Um, the yardage was quite substantial, 218 yards. I bought four skeins. I don't think I'm gonna use four, probably three, but we'll see. I didn't wanna run short. The color is called Kick Drum. And it's this gorgeous navy blue with um, this like rose gold toned uh, and flecks of green and gold in it. Just it's so so pretty, and you can see how it's knitting. It's it's knitting in a in a stripy pattern. It's just beautiful. This navy is like a deep dark navy like your deep dark navy gen uh, denim jeans. So it's got like a little bit of a heathered look to it, which I think you can see there. Yeah, you can see, you get a good good idea there. And the mohair I'm using is this right here, this beautiful rose gold mohair from Neighborhood Fiber Company. She names all of her yarn colors after neighborhood um, landmarks and streets and stuff. So this is not called Rose Gold. It is called Cross Street Market. So that's, um, it's Baltimore. The neighborhood is Baltimore where this company is based. Um, her mohair is a little more special than uh, most indie dyers mohair. It is a 60-40 blend. So 60% mohair and kid, kid mohair and 40% silk and a little bit smaller yardage. So most of the mohair that indie dyers use is a 72 28, 72 mohair, 28 silk. And you get like almost 500 yards, like 460 yards or whatever. Um, this is only 350 yards. But it's also a little bit cheaper than the other mohairs. Um, so there's that. I love it though. It's, it's so soft. I only have swatched with it. I haven't um, knit proper with it. So I'm looking forward to getting to that. Um, and the, oh, and the cal that Stephanie is running is called Crop It Cal on Instagram. I th think there might be a Ravelry page too. I'm not sure. Um, and there will be a prize, prizes actually, I think. So, and they, they were pretty significant. I think it's a hundred dollars 
of yarn from her for pri first prize, and I think there's some other smaller prizes. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to be doing that. So if you also are going to join, let me know. That would be cool. Ah, <sighs> okay, how am I doing? Wow, I'm spending a lot more time than I thought. So sticking with the mohair theme, let me share with you um, one of the cast-ons that's been getting a lot of attention from me this week. It, this is a new design. So I had purchased, if you remember, um, I actually still have it out here. I had purchased this mohair and um, fingering weight superwash from Molly Girl. Sorry, I have it upside down. And I had said, you know, I want to make a sweater cardigan, but, um, or summer, summer cardigan, but looking at these colors, they just don't really remind me so much of summer, maybe late summer. So I thought maybe this could, I could table this for a while and work on something that seems more spring-like, something more wear now, wear, wear nowable. So I went through my stash and this is how I discovered that I really just have a lot of single skeins and unless I'm going to put together a, a grouping of single skeins where I'm going to be playing with colors, um, stacking or, you know, maybe some sort of color blocking like this or um, mixing the colors somehow, I didn't have single, I didn't have enough skeins. Like I needed at least two skeins plus a skein of mohair to play around with the design that I was sort of thinking might be that. Um, and I figured my thought process was I'm going to make a spring version of this and then I'll probably make that or maybe I'll do a variation of whatever pattern it is that I'm going to come up with with that yarn, with the Molly Girl yarn. And I'll do that later in the summer. So I played around, I went through all everything pulled out a lot of my stash. I tried to put, um, I looked for what I had two skeins of um, so that I could do a skein of mohair with two skeins of something else and maybe come up with a pattern. Um, and I settled on, I didn't have very many options really, to be honest, but I settled on this white. This is like, this is like marshmallow fluff, this mohair. It's totally like, it just reminds me of marshmallow fluff. Um, but I settled on this, this white, this creamy white mohair that I bought a while ago just as kind of like a possibility when I knew I was gonna make the as if tea. So I had bought this um, creamy white and then I bought a pink, like a real candy pink, little girl pink color from uh, Legacy Fiber Arts. So that's what this yarn is. This is Legacy Fiber Art Cloud Base. It's a one ply 7228 mohair silk and 460 yards. So um, this color is called Vanilla Bean, which I think you can see written on it right there. Right there, so it's Vanilla Bean. That's what the white is. So I just picked those up thinking, I think I picked them up actually ahead of Vogue Knitting Live because I was planning to shop for the As If Tea yarn um, at Vogue and then um, Fiber for the People published on Instagram, put a picture up of, of this colorway kick drum and I was like, that's what I'm using. Cause she, she dyed it put a few skeins in her shop, they sold right away, and then she realized that she was onto something big and posted a pre-order. So I went into the pre-order and picked the base that I wanted and pre-ordered it, and I waited a really long time, but it was worth it. <laughs> and that's what happens with pre-orders. I'm not, it's not a criticism of the pre-order system at all, but um, yeah, I just, I had to be patient. You have, you've gotta be patient if you, if you pre-order from an indie dyer who's also like a one person show. Um, so anyway, that's where this yarn, where I had, why I had this yarn. And, um, what I am doing is a pretty little dainty lace pattern. Um, this is going to be a cardigan. Um, one, one of those with the idea of like being able to put it on, on those chili when you walk into a chili store or something. And, uh, that's pretty much all I'm going to tell you about it. Just that I've been knitting, um, I'm sort of, uh, working on this pattern. This is a pattern that I, um, am just winging. <laughs> I'm not really, um, I haven't written it down. 
Uh, I am keeping track, so I could publish it if I want. Uh, I have been going, as I knit it, I've been circling around whether I will publish it. Um, just because I, I don't know. There's a couple things I did. I'm not sure how I would explain it in a way that it wouldn't be too confusing for a knitter. But um, I, I may try. I did take careful notes, and I'm, when it, you know, when it comes time to sit down and hammer out the pattern, if it seems like I can make it work, then I will. Um, but I'll, I'll share the progress of that sweater uh, as I go. Um, so I am pairing that with two skeins of a speckle yarn that I will show you more once I get to that part. So sorry, you're going to have to wait. You have to wait on that. So that has been, so <laughs> let's talk about knitting mohair. Um, knitting mohair normally, it's a very slippery yarn. Um, you, you don't knit as quick. I can knit without looking at my needles and I, I think a lot of people who are more experienced knitters can. Um, and I watch my fingers with this stuff because it's so slippery and I'm using metal needles so probably it would be better to use wooden needles. Um, and then when you get to the lace part where you're doing yarn overs and you're knitting together two, two or more stitches together and you're knitting, you're doing SSKs so you're like manipulating, maneuvering the yarn around so that you get that lacy feel. Um, it really, it's slick and slippery and it really takes, I go, I'm going very slow and it's also, um, so it's very time consuming to knit that, that way. Um, however, it's also very pretty. I love the, it just feels, I just keep thinking marshmallow fluff, marshmallow fluff, marshmallow fluff uh, as I'm knitting it. Um, so yeah, that is something to just keep in mind if you decide you're going to do, if you're going to do any mohair, any sweater that has mohair. Um, I didn't have so much trouble with the Elton cardigan when I striped the mohair with the wool because of the wool, the wool lended stability. So, and it was like half, half. So you did, you know, a certain number of rows in wool and then a certain number of rows in mohair and you were quickly back to wool again. So it was it did not seem too bad. Um, to me in that regard, but this is, this is slow. This is slow knitting, N not hard, just slow because I have got to be careful. I, if you drop a stitch, good luck. I mean, it's just going to slide right out. Um, as opposed to like a more wooly wool like this, if you drop a stitch, the stitch will probably stay there waiting for you to find it. Um, but this one, it just, you know, it's before I can even get back to it, it's slipped out three or four rows. Not fun not fun um so and the other i have another new cast on i cast on the oh i don't have this open to the picture i cast on here it is the papa sweater by junko okamato it's this right here I had a brainstorm. Um, I have been wanting to make a Junko pattern for a long time. I actually have another pattern in my queue. I have two in my queue. I, I downloaded the rug when I realized that the pattern was free. Um, and I just, when I see a pattern that's free and I know I, I'm, I'm going to knit it eventually, I will download it. Um, the reason I haven't knitted the rug yet is because it uses heavyweight yarn. So it's a worsted, I think, worsted weight yarn sweater. Um, so that seems to be something that Junko does a lot. Um, they tend to use um, heavier weight wool and knit one size. And um, yeah, uh, this loose, this loose um, style here that you see just, and that's, this is actually uh, a Japanese aesthetic that I've seen quite often. Um, I see it a lot in the, in the um, sewing patterns that I have too. And uh, anyway, I wanted to make a Junko pattern just because whenever I knit from a new, a, a new to me designer, my first or second time knitting um, a pattern from, a new to me designer, I, um, I learn. So I wanted to see, I wanted to experience 
a day in the in you know or like knitting a pattern like knitting through a pattern and seeing what techniques uh, this person uses and this designer uses and what um how they go about shaping a body i just i wanted to learn all about it um and anyway i have had so i have the rug in my queue i also have for my friend in my queue as well which is a dress by junko Oko, Okoma, Oko, i'm gonna say it wrong okamoto um okamoto 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 anyway I'm sure I'm emphasizing the wrong syllable. There's a syllable in there that should be emphasized, but I don't know which one it is. Um, so for my friend is a dress, and I had decided to make it in. I saw it actually before I went to EYF. I, I re, you know, discovered it. It's really cute. It has like a lace-up. I think you knit an I-cord, and it has like a lace-up um, front, like um, a placket that is like this long that you lace up. And it's long sleeved, and it's like just kind of a almost like a Gansy um, silhouette. So kind of a, a box with the sleeves and a drop shoulder, and then this lace up. Um, so I decided I wanted to make a tunic, not a dress, out of it, and I specifically bought some John Arbin yarn to knit that sweater. Um, but I was just looking through, I don't know why, I was just circling around the the designer's patterns and I love this one. I've really loved this one for a long time. And I was also just like, I always think about what I have on hand, my yarn that I have on hand. And I had bought these yarns to go together. Um, I bought them, I was trying to remember actually when I bought the Dream State, I think, I think I bought, no, I didn't buy this at Vogue. Where did I buy this? I Maybe I bought it online. I think I bought it online. Because this, so the body, let me show you the sweater and then I'll talk to you about the yarn. So this is, ha this is what I have so far. I'm about a quarter of the way through the pattern, um, the chart rather, not the whole pattern. But I think, you're gonna get a good sense like so I am using dream state spin cycle dream state which changes color in the skein and that really made me excited um, about doing color work with it because I thought well if it's gonna change color in the skein that'll be cool um, so I wanted to do a design that it would make sense with so I think these flowers these big flowers that are in Junko's design are going to be really nice. Um, it's a big sweater too, and it's only one size. Um, I am using Nightshades. Let me see, I have one here, this is a full skein. So I'm using the Harrisville Design Nightshades, which is a black Cormo base that is then, um, sorry about all the flex on it, um, which is then plied with um, a wool that is dyed, but it's primarily the black Cormo base. I think, hang on, I have the, I have the thing in here. I think it's 100%, oh, American Cormo and wool. So I think it's mostly black American Cormo and then, um, Dye, another yarn is dyed and then that becomes the heather in um, the color so the the palette of this yarn called nightshades is black based yarn with flex of color so they have um, black with a couple shades of blue black with a couple shades of green black with yellow black with gray or white um, and they all have names that speak about nighttime so mine my colorway I think this is the lighter blue that I have and it's called last call or it might be the mid-tone blue maybe it's the mid-tone blue I'm not sure um, but I love it it's like a midnight blue it actually is similar in color to I love blue I love blue I love blues and greens um, it's similar to the kick drum blue actually. It's a little bit richer because it's got more layers of color with the black and the blue together. It's really pretty, really, really pretty. Um, and then the 
the green yarn that I'm using is this. It's um, Dream State by Spin Cycle Yarn. This is a, a gradient color. They're, so these skeins, when you see them, they don't look gradient at all, but then when you cake them, you totally see the gradient. So I think you can see the gradient right there. And this one did had two repeats of its gradient. It's called, the colorway is Deep Bump, in case I forget. Um, so I already have knit with a color that's this one and then this gold color. And I'm getting to this dark blue color right now in the, in the knit. And so it's really fun to knit with. This is, this one has less going on in the skein than some of the, um, dyed in the wool, the thinner weight, um, skeins. This is, they call this a worsted weight. Um, but the night shades is a, um, a DK weight and there, I don't see a lot of difference. I certainly don't feel it in the knit. They feel very similar in the knitting. Um, but again, you know, weight DK and worsted are very close. Um, the pattern called for, um, I think it calls for worsted. And I used, um, as I said, I used DK. I did, had a, I struggled getting gauge. So it's um, gauge, they get gauge on this pattern at using a US size five or 3.75 millimeter. I used, I had to go down to a four with DK weight. <laughs> so that should tell you something. Um, the yarn that they used was a verb for keeping warm. Um, so maybe that yarn was a little thinner. Um, the other thing about the pattern, so it's just one size. The bust, I think, is 57 inches. I think you can see that before you even buy the pattern. Um, yeah, so the bust is 57 inches, which on me, that'll give me almost 20 inches of ease. It's a lot, a lot of ease. So I really didn't want to knit bigger. So if you, the idea when you get a pattern that has one size, you're supposed to go down, like fix your gauge, right? So if I really wanted this to be smaller and just give me like four inches or six inches of ease, I should really knit this in a fingering weight. <laughs> so that would be the way to get um, a smaller sweater. Um, but if you wanted a bigger sweater, you would either go up needle sizes or yarn weight. Um, but clearly going to a DK weight from worse to DK wasn't enough to get it smaller. So I just decided to go with it. I mean, why not? Like how many, I don't need all my sweaters to fit me exactly the same. And I thought that, um, this sweater and the wool, I was thinking about it like the way I think about my humulus sweater. So my humulus sweater, it's very pretty. I love it, but I don't really feel that comfortable wearing it to work because it's a little slouchy, sloppy looking. Um, and I think this is going to be similar. Um, it's just not going to feel polished enough to wear to work. I don't think just in silhouette, but maybe I'm wrong. I might be wrong. Maybe I'll be pleasantly surprised. Um, so yeah, this is also very slow knitting. Um, both of these sweaters though, I think is because what I'm planning to do with my new design fingering weight sweater and, um, also what will happen with this one is once I get past, um, a certain point in the sweater, I'm going to get to some very mindless, just TV, social, easy knitting to do. Um, so I have quite a ways to go though on this <laughs> chart. It's a big chart. Um, and the pattern is written so that you do four repeats of the chart. It's a lot. It'll be slow, but it's okay. It's okay. I will, I will toil through and it will be totally worth it. Totally worth it. Um, yeah. Oh, my only other thing to share with you. Oh my goodness. I didn't want to go over an hour. I won't go over an hour. I took a spinning class today, this morning with Alex Creates. And it was a drop spindle class that was at a farm that isn't that far from me. It was about an hour's drive away. I thought I was going, so I live close to the Hudson River. Um, it's, we're in probably the last neighborhood that's commutable to New York, like the last sort of area. If you get too much further west than where we are, you're a little too far to commute to New York. Um, west and north, we're like west and north of the city. So I thought I was going far out west, <laughs> farther out west, because there's farmland out west of me. And 
I wasn't. I was going south, which surprised me because South Jersey is mostly little beach communities and Philadelphia. <laughs> so it's like and Atlantic City. So beach communities, beach towns, resort towns, fishing communities, a little bit of farmland, and then Philly. Um, so I was actually I went really close to the beach. I didn't go to the beach, but yeah, it was it was really close. Beautiful area, really really pretty area that I don't get to very frequently. Um, very close to Chelsea Yarns. If there's any Chelsea Yarn fans, uh, I didn't go there though today. I had other things. I wanted to get home after the class, and I also wanted to just really think about it. But guys, I tried Drop Spindle for the first time ever, and uh, I wasn't all that successful. I mean, I I understood what I was doing and I made this really cool artsy yarn. I didn't I didn't want to <laughs> make this type of yarn because I don't really knit with this type of yarn, but um yeah, it was just to get the idea. Alex was amazing. He just kept saying, just keep trying it, just keep going. You're gonna the idea is just to understand the twist and understand like the process. And then after that you can really try. I did well there, that one looks good that part right there there I'm a spinner <laughs> um, so I do want to try more spinning and besides like we so we he gave us the wool to mess with it's Cordell 100% Cordell that he dyed and he gave us the drop spindles these very basic drop spindles to to um, practice with and then we also got a bag, and I messed mine up, a bag of Rolags from the farm. The farm is called um, the Purple Alpaca Green Goat, and those were my Rolags. So it's like I got this bright neon -y green and a heather yarn and then a bright pink yarn. So there you go. Um, this is two ounces. Yeah, so those were a gift, and then I purchased from Alex this beautiful yarn bat, which I will have to save until I'm a much better spinner, called Unicorn Farts, and this is three and a half, three and a half ounces, but that white right there that you're seeing, that's in the skein, or in the, in the bat. I don't know what it is exactly, but it, this has all kinds of stuff in it. It's got um, merino, alpaca, targi, fin, cotton, bamboo, silk, soy silk, firestar, angelina silk noy, and banana silk. That's at least what's listed. I don't know if those are, he was supposed to check off. I don't know. It's pretty though. It's very pretty. It'll be a while. I'll have to mess around a little more. Um, so I, yeah, I'm going to continue to explore spinning. So I will talk to you more about that as uh, that progresses. I can see, though, I don't know if any of you spin, but I could see that the for me, the tricky part of this tool is the coordination of, like, learning how to draft the fiber and then also um, spinning this, like, the physical spinning of this thing um so that coordination was a little tricky and i could see if you had a spinning wheel you're not using a hand spinning something you're using both hands to draft the wool and it was definitely easier to draft the wool with two hands than to just do it with one i mean he is very fast and he's a very skillful spinner and was able to draft and spin very quickly. Um, and I imagine that over time, um, I would also get there, but I think I may just jump right into having a spinning wheel. That's, that's where my head is right now af after the class. We'll see. <coughs> see how it goes. Anyway, thank you so much for spending time with me. I really appreciate it. If you're not already a subscriber, please, um, subscribe and, uh, hit the thumbs up button. Both of those will help me get in front of other people and it'll help with the YouTube algorithm because um, that really can work against someone. Someone whose channel like mine doesn't have a huge following. 
Um, anyway, I appreciate seeing you again. I hope you enjoyed spending some time with me and I will see you in a couple weeks. Bye.